morning everyone and welcome back to my channel so today is gonna be a good old-fashioned what I eat in a day video but pregnancy edition which means I still eat lots of tasty things just I guess some slightly different cravings one of the things that I've been really incredibly blessed with is that I haven't had any morning sickness in my first or second trimester I'm in my second trimester now um, oh, Sammy's here to say good morning hi Sammy so these guys just finished their breakfast. I'm going to be having mine shortly. I've really only just gotten my face on and I'm a little slow in the mornings. I guess that's really my only pregnancy symptom. I really feel pretty normal. I get tired at the end of the day and I feel like it takes me longer to feel energized and hungry and awake in the morning so it's about 9 a.m or yeah just before 9 a.m right now and i just finished making a coffee and it's in my favorite little florida turtle mug here that i got from the pensacola farmer's market i love the way it looks like it's wearing lipstick i think that's really fun um and the owner of the little stall was so passionate about it telling me all about it and that i could microwave it and have any beverage that i wanted in it so right now i have an espresso coffee i don't usually finish this I still crave the idea of coffee and the foaminess that you can see on top from the Nespresso pod um, and the creaminess because I do like cream in my coffee, but I wouldn't say I like coffee as much as I normally do since I've been pregnant. I would say I like it about 60 or 70% as much, so I'll have about half while it's hot. I know it's wasteful and then I don't drink the latter half and I don't feel guilty about it because you are supposed to sort of... Be careful with caffeine levels, not medical advice, and people have very varied intakes of caffeine, but something I was sort of told to be careful with, so. But I still like to have my morning coffee, and then to kind of, I don't know, balance it a little bit, get my digestive juices going. Um, I have some Brazil nuts, or another nut if I feel like a different one. I have some walnuts and pecans. Um, in the fridge so sometimes I switch it up with that usually have like very few though like maybe four something like that that's just I don't really want any more than that um, and it's just kind of a habit you guys know I don't um, like I don't have a food routine or a weekly menu or anything I truly really get a lot of joy out of food and cooking and so varying that is a big part of that because otherwise it gets boring for me eating the same thing or cooking the same thing um but i guess um what i have been liking are little rituals like this so i start my day with my like half a coffee and like little handful of nuts and um then after that i have a small breakfast because i still don't really feel like breakfast but i want to have something um for the baby to give her a little bit of growing energy in the morning before i get to lunch so uh, my partner is going to make me a smoothie today sometimes i have oatmeal or even just some fruit if i really am not feeling anything more substantial banana with peanut butter that sort of thing um so yeah, I don't think I have too much else to show you here. Um, quick note on supplements. I'm not going to do any kind of sponsored content around supplements of any kind. I don't even want to show you the jar of what I'm taking, but I take a prenatal, which consists of three pills, which is a lot to swallow, so I usually have that with lunch. I like having it with food. Um, it has some iron in it, so I think that's especially important because of that. Um, all of my nutrient levels are really, really good, so this isn't a very video that tells you how to fix anything because I don't have anything to fix I'm just trying to maintain all of my you know good vitamin levels and things like that um, all of my blood tests um, came back really good so I have that to take and then um, um, if you direct message me on Instagram or something like that I'm totally happy to tell you what it is I just don't want it to be open for like public debate whether it's a good one or not because it was you know a conversation with my medical provider so um, so I take that and then I take one vitamin D and one probiotic this specific time of day is when I used to take my bio K for I would say pretty much since I found out I was pregnant and even before that I was having some anyway um, and um, I really liked it. I really like the quality of it. I feel like it's really good for my digestion. It agrees with me really well. And I like that it's like, I don't know, you know, like a little bit of 
sustenance as well not a lot because it's like a little jar of like liquidy yogurt but um i had that for a long time really liked it can't find it anywhere anymore it's like sold out everywhere um the only one i seem to find which i actually have in my fridge is the blueberry flavor and i hate it it tastes so bad to me so um i like the vanilla one or the original and i cannot find them anywhere so i had to switch to just like um you know like a pill form probiotic but probiotics are really important during pregnancy so um at least that's what I was told, and they're really good for you anyway. So something to talk to um, your medical provider about maybe if you are pregnant, looking to get pregnant, or just general health as well. Outfit of the day before um, I start getting going with my day is this Hill House dress, which thank you for all the recommendations because I knew about Hill House for pregnancy, which is not a pregnancy brand. Um, it is, you know, just a normal brand. This is called the Nap Dress. Um, they have another style as well, which is really pretty, but this one works really well um, during pregnancy or postpartum because it's an empire waist, and this part is so stretchy. It's definitely more stretchy than the average um, dress of this style. What is it with these dresses, um, either with or without mutton sleeves this summer? I feel like I'm not normally into it, but I, I've jumped in with both feet because I told you guys in my previous vlog, my skin on my body, not on my face, is quite sensitive. So I don't like tight waistbands. I like loose, flowy things with at least like a partly natural fiber. It doesn't have to be 100% cotton like this is, but partly natural fibers really agree with me. Um, so yeah, this is my nap dress. I have one in tartan as well, which is a thicker cotton that I haven't worn too much yet because it's still a little bit warm for it, but I'm really excited to wear it for fall. And every time I wear this dress, because the sleeves, I thought I might not like this when I ordered it, but can you see how the sleeves go past the shoulder? A little bit I thought oh that's really it's like a lot of fabric on my 5'4 frame and just not really my style with the little ruffles and stuff but I love it because every time I wear it, it makes me think of that DreamWorks I think movie Swan Princess the Swan Princess did you guys ever watch that when you were younger um, she had kind of like swan like wings of a swan um, dress if this was in a, like a white or a light blue it'd be like full-on swan princess this pretty bird is a little bit more like summer going into fall which is great for now and I have my Coralista blush on I've been piling that on because it's not very pigmented but I really like the way it looks so you guys who are like oh you have such a nice pregnancy glow I'm like really because I I'm not awake yet if I'm filming in the morning um, but it's Coralista I really like it right now I think it is just really easy um, and it looks nice with this dress with a little bit of coral going on then I have my coin pearls lighting is washing it out a little bit because it's pretty bright here but these are actually like a rose gold mix and it is in my ephemeral collection page along with these earrings which are my pine cone earrings these sold out in like a day um, and everything on that page is called the ephemeral collection because it is limited edition it's really my like creative ju juice flowing there and just kind of using things that I have in stock to create new designs that I don't think are very scalable for a full collection of that individual item so they'll kind of mostly be gone once they sell there's usually about two or three of each um, but for the pine cone earrings um, I don't know you guys really like it I've been wearing them a ton too so I totally get it I feel like they're like pretty and dainty and kind of perfect for bringing an outfit into fall because why do I associate pine cones with fall I don't know but I do I guess because they're on the ground with leaves just kind of like makes me feel cozy um so they're um 14 karat gold filled on a little hoop really comfortable they're they feel weightless I don't feel them at all um and I love the way they look I think they're really simple and pretty and dainty so I restock those and more is on the way so they're going to be shipping out really really soon um so yeah that's my little outfit of the day little bump date we're hovering around the 20 week mark right now and this is being filmed and I don't mind telling you guys where I'm at but I won't tell you like the date so that I'm not on pregnancy like giving birth watch when that does happen but this is just past 20 weeks just so you know, in case you're curious. 
Um, I really appreciate all of your really, really kind messages around my little, um, I guess, moment that I had in my vlog where I felt just really incredibly sad about not finding the community of moms. Let me see if I can prop you guys up somewhere so we can have a proper chat. There we go. You guys are balanced on a Pellegrino bottle right now. Pretty preca precarious, but... Um, so I had that chat with you guys right outside here on the patio and it was just like, it was a day after so I just felt like venting a little bit but that day that um, I had the complete fail of the yoga class moment um, where it just didn't happen and it was so different than I thought it would be in terms of the setup. Um, was really sad because you know you kind of envision yourself with this like community of moms to be or moms and just I guess you feel like you indirectly at least um, soak up their wisdom and it just feels really safe um, and it's been hard to establish that here um, on this side of the border because I do have mom friends who've been wonderful giving me all their lists of must-haves um, from Canada but it's been a little bit harder locally to establish that and so it was really really nice to hear from you that some of you have felt the same way or even know people in this area that <laughs> I live in um, who have also really struggled. I think it's just kind of a hard place and a lot of programming and community events and organizations and support groups and all of that has just been canceled and they've reestablished so much other stuff um, even for kids um, but for moms I don't know we've gotten left behind um, in the programming somehow a little bit. A little bit of a hopeful update that I did find a class that I went to it was kind of like an interval training class um, and I've been to it twice now actually since filming that vlog and everyone is so kind and super friendly and the instructor is so bubbly. If you want to know what class it is, also direct message me just for safety. I'm not going to say what it is. I feel like it's like not that hard to figure out because there's not that many classes, but um, I'm happy to tell you um via direct message what it is and i would love it if you would come out and work out with me here's the only thing though um so i like the vibe i like the people um i'm looking forward to going more worry that i may not be able to go forever for the rest of my pregnancies what i mean by forever um because it's on concrete and it's incredibly hard on my joints um i don't know i'll need to talk to some of the other moms to see if they feel um similarly at all about it but um, I found it really tough um, because you spend the last like not that long portion of the class five to ten minutes on a mat on concrete it's sort of like a gorilla style workout where you move around this area um, and kind of go to a different area every class because she's trying to ensure that we have as much um, cool breeze and lack of traffic and room and stuff as possible. They have a studio, but for whatever reason that I don't know, truly, I just don't know, um, they're not using it for this class right now. And um, I kind of wish they, between you and I, I wish they would do it on grass because, you know, I've done yoga on grass before and it's much easier and I think my joints are a little bit you know, extra flexible with the relaxing, and so I've been in quite a lot of pain since I went um, to class on Saturday, especially in my hips. So today is going to involve like a little bit of TLC and taking it easy and um, uh, definitely an Epsom salt bath. Like I'm going to really load up a bath <laughs> with some nice Epsom salts and soak in it for a while and hope that that will um, help for tomorrow to kind of get everything I don't know everything feels like really really tight and like painful um, in a way that I haven't otherwise experienced during pregnancy and it's sad because I felt so you know like fortunate to feel so well um, and I think exercising is something that I definitely perceived would make me feel even better and be really good for me and the baby but um, because of the concrete element I think um, it's been kind of hard, but maybe it's the kind of thing that will get better um, if I go more and I'll get used to it or I'll get really lucky and she'll switch the location. Cross fingers. And munch on some of these. They're a good source of selenium, but you know, they're also really, really tasty. I hadn't had Brazil nuts for quite a long time. And they taste really good. 
All right, so here are the ingredients for his work of art. These are actually frozen because we went blueberry picking. So I froze the ones I had just bought at Trader Joe's. It's quite a large parcel of them. So we're gonna use up some of these, some of these strawberries, milk, peanut butter. This is what makes it delicious. And then bananas that are nice and sweet. So sometimes we use frozen ones, sometimes not. Um, but these have like full on cheetah spots here so that they will make the smoothie nice and sweet without, you know, using anything else that's more processed. All right, let's see how the chef's work of art tastes. Mm. It's very banana forward, but it tastes so good. Highly recommend these straws, by the way. They're the only reusable straws I like because they're, they have like a great rubbery texture and because they're so wide, they wash pretty well in the dishwasher, in my experience. Um, nicer to use than a metal one and easier to clean as well. I'll link them down below. It matches my dress. It's so pretty. So yummy breakfast and now I'm gonna get some stuff done and check it in with you at lunchtime. All right, it is time for lunch and something that I have absolutely loved, but I mean, who doesn't like this? Um, since I've been pregnant, even before I knew, is a grilled cheese sandwich. This is my favorite bread. It's a little bit hard to find. Um, I think Whole Foods and town and country grocery stores here have it. It's like a brown bread, but it's not sour like sourdough is. Um, it's crusty, but not too much. It's so good. It's... Uh, my favorite um, and I'm not a whole wheat person can't do whole wheat pasta I don't even like brown rice <laughs> yes that is me speaking quite highly of it um, then I change the cheese that I put in there all the time this is just what I have in the fridge right now I have a yummy local peach and I'm gonna make a little peach and spinach salad um, very very plain a lot of the time i'll even just have fruit on the side because like a juicy stone fruit or sometimes even watermelon but i'm tired of it now at the end of the summer i don't want it anymore um is kind of what i've been liking with my grilled cheese sandwich whereas usually i guess more in the fall i usually have soup with it but um, i really like the combination of like a whole wheat grilled cheese sandwich nice and buttery got my butter over here um and i put the butter in the pan this is Kerrygold, my favorite the only butter really in my books um i actually put um a chunk of butter probably about eh, this much something like that a little bit more probably for the flip side directly into the pan i do not butter the bread that is too much work because my butter is usually in the fridge which i know like you should leave some butter out to have it soft and then i would maybe do it differently but um, that's how I like it. I've tried the mayo hack, um, but as much as I actually love mayo on my potatoes, I do not like the taste of it on a grilled cheese. I like butter, so um, sometimes I put something else in the grilled cheese sandwich, but recently pretty rarely. It's generally just cheese, um, but in previous times I've done prosciutto, even a little bit of mustard, green onion is like one option. Some people even like like um, dried fruit um, in it or things like that. Also not my favorite, um, but yeah, this is really, really yummy. Um, and what I'm gonna show you how to make later for dinner is so good as leftovers in like a melted sandwich. So stay tuned for that, keep watching. Um, and yeah, usually I like arugula in my san um, salads, but um, spinach is super nutritious and I've been really liking the taste of it for whatever reason. So this is sort of like a different version of a strawberry goat cheese sal salad, which would always pretty much have spinach, but it's peach instead. Also very good with nectarine. Um, here's my dressing. This is really the only dressing that I ever eat. Sometimes there's also garlic in it as well. Balsamic vinegar, um, a little bit of sherry vinegar because my balsamic from Trader Joe's, I'll show you, so this is the sherry vinegar I use. Um, this balsamic is very sweet. Uh, it's very good, but very sweet. Um, so I go ahead and do a little bit of each, some high quality Greek olive oil and a little bit of mustard and just whisk that up.
end result and it doesn't look very nice on the cutting board but I do pretty much always do this to save on dishes so um, this is what it looks like um, last minute modifications I do these often um, which makes me a bad youtuber but I added little pecan pieces for a little extra crunch to my salad and then I found in the cheese drawer at the very back from last time we made um, uni pizza. It, I added um, cacio cavallo smoked uh, mozzarella. You know, it's like these balls that you buy. Um, they're usually sold at Italian grocery stores, um, and it's it's just mozzarella that's been aged a little bit and smoked. Um, so it adds a really nice flavor. And I did not use any Colby Jack, so I just used the. Um, cheddar cheese because honestly Colby Jack's not my favorite. I feel like it has no taste So it's just like a filler cheese. So um, the mozzarella has more flavor and That is what I used and I think it's gonna be really yummy So I feel like I vary the amount of cheese sometimes and this is like on the higher cheese end of the spectrum, so we expect this beauty to be oozy and if it's a long piece of bread, I cut it into three. I guess I like more pieces to my food because I also um, cut a quesadilla into four pieces, not three pieces, you know, like the half folded ones. Here's what it looks like on the inside. I'm not getting a huge cheese pull, but it looks so good. Have a little bite. Mmm. Hello again, so here is my snack. Most days I either have um, a snack that consists of cheese and crackers, nuts if I haven't had them, almost always some fruit, um, and I've also been favoring protein um, as a snack. Like I told you guys, I often um, want meat a little bit more than usual, and that does skew towards red meat, um, but this is something I'm excited about. These are chicken tenders, and I'm gonna do a little mayo and sriracha here going on for some dipping. And I made these myself. They're actually chicken thighs, um, leftovers from yesterday's dinner. Leftovers always make a good snack. Um, and the seasoning is, or the breading is panko. Um, I marinated them with a little bit of sour cream, which turned out really good and made them super extra tender. Added some sage, some paprika, and something else. I think it was some chicken seasoning um, to the panko breadcrumbs, which gave them a nice little extra zing of flavor. Oh, and lots of pepper. And then I have this strange um, fruit creation, which is an aprium from Trader Joe's. So it's a combination between a plum and an apricot. They got super ripe really, really fast. You can see how juicy it is. It's actually kind of running everywhere, um, but they're so yummy, really delicious. I've been loving any kind of stone fruit recently like this, and I like the combination of protein and fruit. It feels like a little cheese board kind of inspired treat every time I have a snack that's a combination of the things I described. Hello again. So it's time to start thinking about dinner because this one needs to cook for a long time. So very low effort, very long cooking time. I would say a solid four hours, but I really don't know um, using this new gas stove how long it's going to take because I used to have electric before. So I think it might be a little bit faster, um, but I'm still thinking it's gonna be about three to four hours until it's as tender as I want it to be. So this is my recipe for pork carnitas. I really haven't done that much Mexican food during these what I eat in a day recipe videos. Um, this recipe is based on a few authentic ones that I've read, but it is not by any means authentic because I have kind of tinkered with it so that it includes only things that I have in the fridge at all times other than the pork shoulder and um, the tacos as well. I'll show you my favorite brand of tacos later and how I kind of assemble everything in the trimmings so that I don't have to buy anything else. There's mainly one ingredient that I think quite traditional um, carnitas recipes that I've read online always have, and that's orange juice. And I never have orange juice um, in the house because I don't like it if it's pre-made and 
I mean, if I'm gonna squeeze fresh orange juice, I'm gonna drink it. I'm not gonna put it on some pork. So um, here's how I do it. I tend to use a light beer, like something not too substantial, which Stella is perfect for. I actually always hated Stella, but it's perfect for cooking. It's what I consider to be a kind of cooking beer, very tasteless, um, but it'll be perfect for this. It's gonna cook down for a long time and give it a nice flavor. Um, and then, like I said, you would traditionally use orange juice, um, but I really like the flavor that having some zest gives it. So what I do is I take these, um, cut in half, and squeeze them over the meat once we're ready to deglaze. And then I usually add in about half of a large orange with, like, once it's squeezed out into the actual stew. I might add all of these because the... You know, flavor and bitterness of the um, zest of the skin from mandarin oranges is much milder. Perfect because they're actually a little bit disappointing and sour. Um, I bought them because I've, you know, had this fruit thing that I told you about that I just love fruit right now. Um, but I haven't been reaching for them, so this is a perfect way to use them up. Um, and then you want lots of onions. I'm actually considering using another half beyond this. Um, I think they give it a beautiful sweet flavor that goes well with the citrus. And then spice-wise, it's whatever you like. Using taco seasoning is not traditional, but I really like this one. Um, it has, you know, no weird ingredients. So I use a little bit of this. Um, I'm going to coat my pork shoulder with it. You want a well-marbled meat, something around two pounds, unless you're going to double it. Really good quality oregano. I got this one on Amazon. I really like it. Oh, here's the label. I think it's really good, good flavor. A little bit of cumin, but not too much for my taste. And then something spicy of your choice. Um, I think you're supposed to use a jalapeno, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use some red pepper flakes and hope for the best. And like I said, I think I'm gonna see how this looks chopped up and then maybe use another half beyond that. And always fry off your meat so that you have a nice you know, crust on it. And then you put it together like you would a stew, but I'll show you the steps. The house already smells so good and it's just the spices. I haven't even added the citrus yet. So here it is, frying away. And then quick little tip. Well, first of all, I forgot to tell you one of the ingredients, which is cloves. Um, we don't like too much. I overdid it once, so I just use a little bit, something like this. Then you're gonna have to fish them out at the end, which is really not that bad, because the um, um, gravy you end up with is relatively clear. So I usually fish it out. Um, with a spoon and it's not a big deal. Otherwise, you could actually shove them into the meat and that would work well as well. This is one and a half onions chopped, which is really not that much once it has softened. Um, and then my hack for you is if you're trying to cook this faster, um, two tips. Number one, um, use a slow cooker or even a pressure cooker. Um, I'm not bothering because I have all day um, to let it cook. And I kind of like the way it fragrances the house and I love, um, I guess I just love using a Dutch oven. I feel like you get a really good result with it. Um, I love the sear that you get on the meat, everything. Um, and if you want it to be in a Dutch oven and be faster, cut up your meat into large cubes. Um, all I did today, because I have lots of time, is remove the strings so that it's not you know tight together anymore since I'm not cooking it as a roast. I want to get a little bit of the color, have nice color on the onions before I go ahead and add my beer and my smushed little mandarin oranges. So here's how it's looking right now. It's looking really yummy. Um, smelling better and better, especially now with the fried up onions. Um, I just added the beer. And then I kind of like this part. I mean, it's a little bit messy, um, but I just love the result that you get with this. This is sort of my way of making this recipe, which is weird. Um, but you squeeze the juice in, and then you dump it. <laughs> I did wash these first. Um, I have not tried to freeze the results of this before, but I'm sure it would freeze really well. If we do have some leftovers from it, then I will totally freeze them because I'm starting to get into the mindset of making some um, frozen things for after the baby comes. Um, when I'll be taking care of her, I think it'll be really nice to have some of my favorite things in the freezer. My number one thing that I will make for sure, everything else is kind of, you know, up for grabs as to how much time I have before then, but one thing I'll 
I'll make for sure is a lot of bone broth and I've bought some silicone molds to make kind of even like one person portions of that if I want some. Um, I've heard it's really great for recovery after giving birth so that's definitely a plan of mine. I'm going to buy some, you know, really good quality bones um, from our local butcher and that'll probably be like a whole weekend um, for me. Isn't that so fun? Do you want to come? Um, do you want me to film that? I don't know. I feel like it'd be kind of weird, but I'll be like a witch with like a giant pot of bone broth going, uh, most of which I will freeze um, at least, you know, one round if not two. So I'm going to do that. I thought wontons would be really yummy to go with that. So just frozen homemade wontons. What are you kitties up to? I heard that. Shenanigans in the sunshine. Yeah. Um, we have a DIY project going on there. Um, so this is a nursery preview. That base, my partner is spray painting for me because it's a really ugly brown color and kind of falling apart because it's from when I played with a dollhouse that I still have that my mom kept as she kept so many wonderful things from when I was little. Um, so that's going to go in her nursery and um, we're going to have it be white because um, we're kind of going for a blue and white, um, like Cinderella blue and white theme. Um, Sorry, that's an aside. Anyway, I feel like they're, they know he's like out there and being extra naughty <laughs> because of that. But um, yeah, I think little things like this, some lasagna, you know, just warming foods because it'll be winter will be really nice to have. So that's my grand plan and we'll actually find out how much of that I'll do. But um, this is pretty much complete now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down and cover it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down and cover it. And I'll show you what it looks like in a couple of hours. All right, so four hours later, here's how it's looking. I put it on a very low simmer, barely perceptible, and the meat is, you know, completely pull apart tender. Little treat for me. Um, I'm gonna pull all the meat out reduce the juices a little bit and then I'm going to decide I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to broil the meat if you want it to have a crispy texture and then you can add sauce to sort of have a crispy and soft texture then you can do that sometimes I don't really want that though I just want it to be soft and tender um, and so then I'll just shred it right into the reduced sauce and then you have a saucy porky delicious mix um, but of course um, the next step, once I pull out the meat, is going to be to pull out the oranges and as many of the cloves as I can locate. Um, you could also filter it, but then you'll lose all the yummy onions. So it's really, you know, a judgment call about how you like your carnitas, but that's how I'm going to do it. Um, and then I've started pulling out everything I want to serve it with. I might have a few more hot sauces and trimmings um, and some lettuce as well, but main things is i have to have guac with this i usually make it myself it's so expensive how how did this happen i don't know i mean i know avocados are expensive but this is like i could pretty much eat this on my own um anyway i did feel like being lazy you know it's sunday so um i just decided to buy some as well as some fresh yummy salsa this salsa is really really good i do I would say normally I make the guac myself and buy the salsa. Um, really good sour cream. I really like the green Tabasco, so that's what I'm gonna use. And um, I have some lime. Um, this is kind of looking a little bit crusty, but I don't think we have any other limes, so this is gonna have to make do. You know, it's Sunday. Obviously, don't feel like going for groceries, so this is what we're gonna have. Oh, I, I knew I had something else to show you. I love, by the way, this, so this um, new home we have has a fridge um, that is, like the fridge part is up top, which in the townhouse it was down below, which made me a little like tiny bit miserable every single day, especially like pregnant. Um, I wasn't that pregnant in the townhouse, but still I could just like feel it getting annoying, you know? Um, so in here, oh yes, hello. These are the best fresh tacos short of getting it from like a proper Mexican grocery store or restaurant. Um, 
we don't I don't think we have one of those near us um, so I really like the quality of these ones I think they taste really good really similar to a good restaurant um, and I always toast them I definitely like mine a little bit charred um, so I'm gonna toast these up in a cast iron pan and I think that's about it that you know we need some crunchy lettuce some yummy trimmings and then the pork just kind of speaks for itself so here is the final spread. I thought I would show you the table before these guys start digging in. We're having a friend over for dinner, so um, I know it's gonna get messy. We're basically running out of table space because of all the trimmings. These are some lime chips. I used to say I didn't like these, but I gotta say they're tasting pretty good today. Mm. Here is the beautiful carnitas. I do like it really saucy, so I didn't reduce the sauce too much. Especially, you know, it'll thicken overnight, so it's nice to have a little extra sauce if you're going to have leftovers. Here we have a little arugula salad. I would have loved to have something be a little bit more like cilantro-y, but I didn't have any. These are the pizza plates my mom got us when we got the uni, which was my bar end of bar exam celebration gift to myself. Um, I think even before I found out my results and then some warm nicely charred tortillas and that's gonna be my spot my little throne and i'm so excited getting really hungry and looking forward to just sharing this yummy family style meal so before i turn to my inbox for the evening i usually like to set out a little sweet treat um, it takes about 10 minutes to get these to where I want them to be. Tonight I'm gonna have these. There's a lot of brands that do chocolate covered banana, but this Dole one is really cheap on um, Amazon Fresh. And I love that they come in little wrappers that are pretty much exactly the portion that I would want for this. I've really been enjoying these. And then a little bit more premium is this Brothers Ice Cream Vanilla Ice Cream Bonbons. Um, these are exceptionally good. I've tried the Trader Joe's um, ice cream bonbons. They do not compare. These are so good. They also exist in mint and caramel, um, but I like the vanilla. The chocolate on top of it is really premium quality. It's so good. Um, and the ice cream is really good quality too. You know, ice cream is always delicious. And what makes me often want ice cream, not tonight, it's not that hot tonight, but... Um, what usually makes me really, really want ice cream is how hot it is and just how refreshing it is. Um, so yeah, that is everything I've eaten in a day. Sometimes I have green tea if I feel like it. I don't feel like it today. I'm just going to have some more of my very favorite um, Pellegrino and call it a day and start the week off with some yummy leftovers. So thank you so much for watching this What I Eat in a Day. It might be very different or very similar to what other pregnant women you or women you know may eat, but I thought it included some yummy meal ideas for everyone, which is why I wanted to make it. So thank you so much for watching. Everything I mentioned in this video, as well as my loosely written recipes as usual, will be included in the info bar down below. And I will see you in our next installment on Style. Bye.